What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate on Microsoft Teams, and we'll look at a new action which is Create a Team. This action allows you to create a team in your Microsoft Teams, meaning that if you have a process where you are manually creating teams currently, you could potentially automate this using Power Automate. So if you use Microsoft Teams for projects where you may invite customers into your Teams tenant and do stuff based on that. You could automate this so that when you create a new project, you could tick a button that says, yes, create a team as well. You could use it for maybe if you have like a, a membership thing where when new memberships are sold of a certain type, a new Microsoft team is created for those members to collaborate in uh, and do stuff. So let's take a look at this action today. So. I'm in Power Automate and I can click on New Step and I can go to Microsoft Teams, this connector here and then we have a action here which is Create a Team Preview. So I click on this and I'm asked for two things. I'm asked for a team name and a team description. So these are both required parameters. So the team name will put in uh, flow, no flow for teams. Just on, that to be fun. And description for teams. Uh, this is a team created by uh, Power Power Automate. If I click on advanced options, I also get this visibility drop down. So I can choose whether this team is public or private. If it's public, it means that anyone inside my tenant can navigate to it and join the team. If it's private, then it means that only certain members can join that team or will need to be invited to join that team. So I'm going to just leave this, leave this on public for now and we'll test this out. So we'll click on test. I'll perform the trigger action. We'll save and test. We'll run the flow. Click done. It'll go off. It'll have a little think about it. And it'll create a team. So I think previously we were able to create a new team via the Microsoft Graph, but this gives us a handy uh, action that we can use inside Power Automate, making it a bit more accessible. So we get a few details about the team. We get the team ID, we get the status code of 200 to mean it's been successful, um, and some other information, um, which isn't really that useful to us. But if I go over to my Microsoft Teams now, if I go to my Teams, You'll see I have a new flow team here, flow no flow team, and I'm a member. So there is one important thing to understand about this action is that because it's being triggered from me, it's going to create me as the owner of the team or whoever owns the flow. So a team always has to have at least one member or owner in them. Uh, I think it always has to have one owner. Uh, and this allows us the, the the action allows us to create that team programmatically. So if you are doing this and you need to specify um, someone else to someone else to be a member, you may want to use like maybe a, a service user or a service account to create these things. And then we have the other actions which are like add members to teams. You could do things like you know loop through a list of project members or list through a group of like membership people uh, and add those people automatically to the teams. So I think this is a really cool action. It really brings the accessibility of creating teams automatically to the masses. So um, so I think it's really cool. It does have some uh, negative connotations. You, you do need to be really up there on your uh, on your power automate governance to make sure people aren't creating hundreds of teams. Uh, otherwise, you're going to hit that team limit pretty quickly. Um, so it would be a good thing to educate your users and maybe consider whether you allow, um, you know, Teams connectors inside your environment. You know, data, you know, data loss prevention and governance is a really important thing these days. So do make sure that you're aware of this action and that you are controlling it appropriately. But what do you guys think? Is this something that you will use in your day-to-day -day lives? definitely something that I think we should be using um, for me. So I'm going to start using this action um, to automatically create things if I can. Um, but as always, I want to know what you guys use this for. You know, I came up with ideas of projects. So I use, I work with projects and I invite, you know, people into my team's tenant and we work on projects collaboratively. But what do you guys think? What do you use it for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you, if you enjoyed this video, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that would be appreciated. It really helps me grow this channel. If you've not already, click the subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.